<laughs> this is the console tiny computer ITX build roundup insanity. And it should be pretty obvious from just the lineup that depending on what your goals are for your build, it's going to affect your case selection. I can't just be like, this case is amazing. I just can't. So I think that I've done a video on all of these individually at some point in time. The oldest one is the Dan Case A4. That might have been in a past lifetime. I'm not sure. That one may that one may never have been published in a past lifetime. But it's the Dan Case A4. I'm sure that it is very well known. Aluminum, super compact. So the Dan, the Dan Case A4 is, is definitely the smallest one of the bunch. I mean. There's just not, not really much to it. You could probably fit a custom loop in here. I'm sure that some crazy people have, but you know, this has got a build in it. The Dr. Zaber Sentry 2.0 has a build in it. Our Sliger Consuola, it also has a build. This is the SM560. The, uh, there's several versions of this case. This one's for the three slot GPU, but I thought it was important to have a lineup of all these because when you see them in a lineup like this it's like well there's not really as much of a range as you might think from the the smallest case to the largest case and certainly if you look at the the real tall console ones we've got you know the uh, Sliger Consuola and then the Sentry from Dr. Zaber and the uh, Salvo Studios S402 and so the console builds the really the Achilles heel of the console builds is CPU cooling. Now I did really well with the Dr. Zaber Sentry um, because of the way that the Noctua fan mounts and I'm using a Noctua L9 cooler but I'm not using the Noctua L9 cooler fan I'm using one of those uh, high static pressure fans from Noctua and it's it's really just wedged in there and I lucked out because of the particular motherboard layout with this motherboard will let me do that and the CPU gets sufficient airflow. So I'm using a 3700X at stock settings and it's basically fine in a century for gaming and things like that. Now, Prime 95, it does get a little toasty. Uh, as some people have discovered that it's, it's a little bit of a challenge to keep the CPU cool in the Dr. Zaber build, but I've got room for my two slot, two slot and a bit GPU. I've got a blower style GPU in there right now, but because of the ventilation in the top, it works well if you're, if you're doing something else. And I think Dr. Zaber wins here on the aesthetic. You know, they're pretty much all uh, black boxes. The Dan case is a nice uh, aluminum, and so it's got that aluminum texture, but I still think that overall, the aesthetically, for my eye, the Zaber Sentry uh, wins. I also really like the feet. The downside of the Sentry, though, is if you need to take your computer apart to work on it, a little bit of a pain. I mean, the security bits add to the aesthetic, but you got to take the foot off, and then you got to take the security screws out, and the case derives a lot of its structural rigidity from the side, so not the best. The Dan case is a little bit a little bit similar in that if you take the sides off, you lose something structurally. Whereas both the Consuela and the Salvo Studios S402 um, do a little better in that regard. Now the Salvo Studio or the Sliger and Salvo Studios, uh, in terms of like their feet, I think the Salvo Studios feet. Are a lot better the, the standoff so if we if we go with like standoffs and mounting if i had to rank them it's probably going to be again the dr zaber build and then probably the salvo studios build and then probably the sm560 and then the dan case and then consuela there is a mounting plate that i don't have set up here and it's just a flat plate with rubber feet on the bottom i don't eh. i could have done a little bit better with the feet i think on on Consuela. If Consuela and the Salvo Studios S402 were in a head-to-head, -head, just these two, I really think it's down to the Salvo Studios S402. I think Sliger did a better job with the SM560, and yeah, it's a more expensive case. Uh, the SM560 has a lot more clever features, but the Salvo S402 has just as many clever features in their console layout versus the Consuola. Now there's also a uh, Consmall and some other variants of this case from Sliger. So depending on what your goals are, um, you can sort of tweak the parameters here a little bit and get a little bit smaller console build with like say a two slot GPU. Uh, but you know, it's neither here nor there. I do think that Sliger did a little bit better with the aesthetic because this uh, front 
brushed aluminum uh, is actually pretty attractive. I also think Sliger did a better job with the I.O. because you get USB type A and type C at the front as well as headphone and microphone on the Salvo S402. Not so much. Bit of a cost difference though. The uh, Salvo Studios case, it's a labor of love. It's about $200 US. The Sliger Consola, it's a little bit more at 219. So not dramatically more expensive, but a little bit more expensive nonetheless. And I think you sort of get that with the way that the front panel is and the optional connectors and, and that sort of thing versus the thoughtful internals on the Salvo Studio. So in terms of price, a bit of a wash. Now the price, oh, the price varies quite a bit. The Dr. Zaber Sentry is surprisingly kind of expensive. Uh, it was about 260, 250, 260 if you backed it on Indiegogo, a little less, a little more, bit of a wash. Some resellers have been selling them for like $800. I don't know if that's legit or not, but all of these cases are in the 200 to $250 range, basically. The SM560 is about uh, 230, I think, and the uh, console, the three GPU console is around uh, 220. The uh, Salvo Systems S402 is around 200 US. Um, that's pretty good considering that it comes with fans and none of the rest of these come with uh, fans or any kind of any kind of anything like that. Also comes with a handle and feet, whereas uh, depending on what you're doing, some of the systems like the Sliger systems, it's an optional accessory. The Dr. Zaber build comes with feet. Of course, the Dan case comes with everything that you need. I had trouble finding current pricing of the Dancase A4 at the time of this video. However, it looks like on eBay and a few sellers in the European Union have been selling it for around $200 US. So pretty much all of these uh, premium ITX console-ish builds are around the $200 price point. All right, so let's do a little role play. No, not that kind of role play. Shh. Let's suppose that you want no compromises. You want to build an AMD or an Intel system. The Intel system builds are a little more problematic in these cases, and I'll talk more about that. Let's, you're gonna build a 12 core, maybe even a 16 core, and you're gonna throw in a 2080 Ti. Pretty much the SM560 is your best bet if you want a machine that has the potential to be quiet and will also handle that load. So as this SM560 is configured, I've got a 240 millimeter closed loop cooler in there. It's the, it's the Corsair. I've got a uh, 12 core Ryzen 3900X and I've got a triple slot area for my GPU. So a GPU like my, you know, Gigabyte Windforce OC card, uh, 2080 Ti will work in this case. It is audible. It's not super quiet. The fans will ramp up. You will see temperatures on your CPU of 75 degrees C, even without PBO. This case doesn't have a lot of CPU cooler clearance. None of them do, but this one has the most room for a um, closed loop all-in-one cooler. It also has the highest internal volume. You can see it's, it's kind of chunky. So you've got some options in terms of like, if you wanted to do uh, custom loop cooling, you want to have an external radiator. You've got some options for how you mount your, your input power. You've got a, a few options for the power supply, but in general, this case is the most flexible because it is the largest, you know, it's maybe too large if you're, if you're going for something like that. If you want an almost no compromises build, you could do something uh, with the Dan case A4, but you're starting to have trouble on the CPU side of things. Like you're gonna have to give up some room inside the case for an all-in-one cooler in order to be able to manage a GPU and then you're gonna need a smaller form factor GPU. You can use low uh, profile coolers like the Noctua L9A. I mean, this is what I'm using in this Dr. Zaber build and I've been using it in this build for months and basically it's okay. The CPU can run a little on the toasty side depending on what the situation is. And not every ITX motherboard is going to work as well as this because I'm using really over the top overkill high static pressure cooling with that low profile cooler, which helps offset things a little bit. Uh, you know, I think Paul, Paul's hardware hot rotted his by just cutting a huge slot. And that's certainly an option. Although with the Dr. Zaber build, the case, the side of the case really contributes a lot to the structural integrity. So if you're going to hot rod your case, I think actually the Salvo Studios or the console are the better choice for doing that because look, I don't, I don't have the side on here and it's still really structurally rigid. 
So if you're gonna use even like the AMD box cooler, which is kind of loud, and I, I don't think I would want it in a small form factor machine because you don't have the rest of the computer to baffle the sound from the the uh, you know the the bundled the inbox cooler with the 3900X, but you could hot rod this case really easily, or just not use it with a side panel and still have plenty of room for a GPU, CPU. You've got tie downs for the cables, a lot of good options. Similarly with the console, you know I've still got my my uh, Gigabyte RX 570 motherboard in here with uh, CPU, and I've got my low profile Noctua fans in the console build. I really like the fact that the side panel just pops on and off. I don't need screws. That's a huge improvement over the Salvo Studios S402 because it requires Phillips screws. And with this, you just push it on. I mean, depending on what your preferences are, it's like, do I want you know friction knobs or do I want screws? That's a you thing. That's not a me thing. But for me, I like the friction knobs better than the Phillips screws. Maybe worth the price of admission alone is if your motherboard has an M.2 slot on the rear, not gonna be doing much with the console in order to get at that. There is a vent there, so the motherboard is ventilated on the back, but being able to remove that M.2, not so much. Whereas on the Salvo Studios S402, you've got the option to get at the back of the motherboard. You just pop out four Phillips screws and you're good to go as far as getting your M.2, replace your M.2. You don't have to tear your whole system down. You might come to me in a roll and say, but, but Wendell, I want to use one of these in a horizontal configuration. Which one is best for a horizontal configuration? Well, Dr. Zaber wins hands down because it comes with much better feet. They're, they're not just glue on, stick on feet. They're actually feet that are molded for holes on the back of the case. You put the feet in, you put a little peg in, it actually pushes the case off of the, uh, the tabletop fairly well. Um, so you've got a better foot situation with the Dr. Zaber case. However, for my build, my specific build with the blower style cooler, it hurts cooling to run it in a non-tower configuration. This cools, you know, five to 10 degrees C cooler, which translates to FPS on the 2080, the RTX 2080 that I have in here, translates to quite a few FPS running it in a horizontal configuration versus a tower configuration. The Sliger system is probably my second choice for running in a uh, flat horizontal configuration just because it's got some vents on the side and you can use the low profile Noctua and you can sort of pull air in. The Noctua fans give you a little bit more intake surface area versus my blower fan. So the, the practical realities of that is that as long as you've got sufficient clearance from the rubber feet, it's gonna work okay. The Salvo Studios S402 is not bad, but you got this large vent on the back. It's basically the same situation in terms of, of intake, but it's recessed a little bit. There's just something about running this case horizontally that I just like it vertically a lot more. The other thing, if you're gonna run this horizontally and you're gonna run it in this kind of an orientation with the GPU oriented like this, the air is gonna come in to the GPU fans. If you've got a radial cooler, you know, it's gonna come in like this. If you've got a blower cooler, it's gonna come in down here. You've got this 70 millimeter fan to help you with cooling, but as the air comes in from the top, uh, it's going to exhaust this way and hot air naturally wants to rise in a console configuration Especially in a piece of furniture. This is has the potential to create just a thermal loop because this is going to suck air in It's going to push over here And then the air is going to make its way out at the top here and maybe on the side because this is a mesh side remember And so you just end up with this endless loop of thermals. I have not tested that I didn't have a chance to try that but I don't think that would be good if you were gonna stuff it in a piece of furniture. I don't think any of these would be particularly good if you're gonna stuff it in a piece of furniture. I think you're much better off setting up one of these in a tower configuration behind or beside your television or your entertainment console versus stuffing it in a piece of furniture because it's just not gonna breathe. I mean, this I was using in my conference room um, in uh, a rack with some other equipment to run the conference room equipment like the cameras and the sound system and stuff. And this little thing, and it's, a it's an enclosed rack with just a couple of low RPM fans. And this little guy with his little, his little six core Intel processor and his uh, RX 580 graphics card is enough to overwhelm the cooling capacity of that entire rack when it's running and we're doing full multimedia and it's generating a lot of heat. So yeah, you're cramming it in your living room furniture that doesn't have active cooling, forget it. So who are the winners and losers here? Well, there's no real losers. I mean, all of these cases are, are perfectly fine depending on what your goals are. The SM560, no compromises. Just hands down, no compromises. But it's also, you know, chonk. 
you know you can have two and a half three and a half inch storage combinations of two and a half inch three and a half inch storage you've even got two and a half inch storage behind the front panel i mean it's just expandability and expansion coming out the wazoo if you need a portable workstation with a handle metal case you really can't go wrong the aesthetic yeah okay maybe yeah you know you got some options you can get it with side, solid side panels without solid side panels slager gives you a ton of options the dr zaber sentry build i think wins on aesthetics it's purely subjective but i really i mean the dr zaber build has got that aesthetic and it's got those clever features the dan case a4 it's it's basically in its own category it's a win it does some stuff that the other cases don't, don't really do it's smaller uh, you still got a lot of room for a GPU, even though it is a smaller case, but you're compromising on CPU cooler performance. And you definitely compromise on CPU cooler performance on all three of these. Less so with the Dan case and no CPU compromises, not really if you're going to go with an all-in-one on the SM560. You've got a little bit less of a compromise on CPU cooling here. You've got the, at least the option of using 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler for your CPU. Um, you can do that with the Dr. Zaber build as well, but it's a little more intrusive on the graphics card side of things. You get a little bit more room for graphics card and internals just because the case is physically larger from Salvo Studios. But you can run that, you know, 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler with your Dr. Zaber Sentry. You could cheat a little bit. You can get really, really tiny all-in-ones. This is an Asetek. I'm not going to talk about this yet, but this Asetek cooler is going to be making an appearance very soon. And it's thick. <laughs> it protect and thermal dissipate. But look, it's so tiny. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. There's a, it's, it's not, it's a little too big for the Salvo Studios S402. It could work in console, in the console from Sliger with a little bit of modification and you're better off with a 120 millimeter cooler in the Dr. Zaber or the S402 anyway. So, you know, the whole time I was doing that video, I thought I was forgetting something. And it turns out I was. This is the NZXT H1. <laughs> Looks to me like a small form factor ITX computer. Now I know there's ITX tower cases. There's quite a few of those, you know, there's a Fractal, NZXT has a nice one, but I'm, this is video's really, you know, it's a spectrum and we're going a little bit even farther toward the normal-ish tower case. But the NZXT H1 does deserve a special mention. So I thought I would shoot this for it really quickly. The really nice thing about the NZXT H1 is that for a relatively compact, almost console looking build, uh, it's sort of a just add water solution. It comes with a power supply, good power supply. It comes with an all-in-one uh, closed loop cooling solution for your CPU. This is the only one that I think would work well with a CPU like a Ryzen uh, 7 or a Ryzen 9, like the, the, the 95 to 105 watt CPU without really, without you really having to be careful about your component choices. You can do it in the other builds. There are some trade-offs, like if you use a 120 millimeter custom loop cooler, uh, or I mean a 120 millimeter closed loop cooler, you may get into a situation where, you know, you can't use the GPU that you want to use because it's really big. Well, those kinds of things aren't a problem with the NZXT H1. I've got the Gigabyte 5700 uh, graphics card in here, which is a two and a half slot card. It is a tight fit. It's a little fiddly to get the side off, which is why I've already got the side off. And you've also got this closed loop CPU cooler. The pump's embedded right in, but this, this works well to keep even a Ryzen 9 3900X relatively cool for this form factor. I think this is also the only form factor that would work well with say an i5 10600K. Although if you're gonna get a 10850 or 10900K, it's going to overwhelm the cooling solution, even in this case. But a 10600K, as long as you're not gonna overclock it too much, it would be fine. This is a good sort of easy first, you know, compact, it comes with everything you need. You basically just add your motherboard and your memory and your processor and your video card and you're done. It comes with everything. So the price kind of reflects that, but given the pricing landscape of everything else, I thought the NZXT H1 deserved a special mention because you know, it is sort of a mass produced alternative that's vaguely small form factor. I mean, you know, the Dan case, look at this thing. 
This is crazy. It would be hard to commercially produce this in massive quantities and have good component compatibility. So the NZXT H1 I think wins in, in terms of component compatibility. Otherwise you really got to do your homework on the components you pick on these uh, small form factor builds because you could easily get yourself into a situation where your computer's not going to run correctly because it can't get the cooling that it needs or the parts just don't fit. As I was wrapping up this video, one of our benefactors pointed out to me, oh you know the Fractal Node 202, it exists. Yeah, Fractal makes a console case too, and it's not uh, not super expensive. It's quite a bit less than all of these other cases because it's mass produced. It's a little different. There are some trade-offs with using it, but you know, if you're doing your homework and you're doing your research, I'll mention it. I've never actually built in the Fractal Node 202, so I don't know much about it. Uh, but it's old. It's you know a five-year-old case design. It's been updated a couple of times, I think, but. Uh, just be aware that that exists as well. That's another small form factor console-ish build. I mean, technically, yeah, the Dan case and the the uh, Sliger, the one Sliger case, not really a console build, but it is portable. So there you go. There's a roundup of console cases and the options, and not not really a lot of variation in price. I sort of expected that there would be a hundred dollar, approximately a hundred dollars U.S. Uh, console case, but no. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you like this kind of thing, let me know because we can do more stuff and more Q&A and more insanity. But uh, I don't know. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you later.